Economics, Standard 11, Unit 1, Introduction to Microeconomics, Continued. Utility. What is utility? In literal meaning, utility means usefulness. In economics, utility is the one satisfying power of a commodity or a service. It is in the form of goods and services for an consumer, individual consumer at a particular place and at a particular time. So utility means usefulness, usefulness. In economics, it is just, in economics, it is just called as one satisfying power. Want satisfying power of your commodity. Satisfying power of your commodity. Of a good or service. There are certain characteristics of utility. First, utility is psychological in nature. It depends upon the Consumer's mental attitude. For example, a vegetarian derives no utility from non-veggie items. So it depends upon the mental attitude of the people. So utility is psychological in nature. Characteristics. So, characteristics. One, psychological in nature. Psychological. Second, utility is not equal to usefulness. Just think of this. You are a smoker. Smoking a cigarette. Smoking a cigarette gives utility for the smoker. He derives satisfaction out of it. But it is not good for his health. It is injurious to his health. So, utility is not equivalent to Usefulness, not equal to usefulness. So third, utility is psychological nature. Utility is not equal to usefulness. And third, utility is not the same as pleasure. Not as we have that is enjoyment, pleasure, happiness. I can give an example for this. A patient taking medicines or consulting the doctor, thus receiving the services of the doctor. And of course, it der he derives utility. He, he is cured. But at the same time, that is not a pressure for him. The treatment or the taking of medicine does not give him pressure. So utility is not, that is uh, the same as pressure, not as the same as pressure. So this is the fourth point, third point you have to remember. Utility is not, utility is psychological in nature. Utility is not equivalent to uh, usefulness and utility is not the same as pressure. Now, utility is personal and relative. An individual obtains various utility from one and the same in different situations and different places. So, it is personal and relative. And fifth, utility is the function of the intensive intensity of human want. The intensity of human want differs. An individual consumer Faces that is a tendency of diminishing utility after using it. For example, a person one who comes out of hot sun, when he enters in, he drinks a lot of water and he wants to quench his thirst. So maybe the first three classes of water, he gets higher utility. But as he drinks more and more, the utility diminishes. 
So utility is the function of the intensity of human wants. And sixth point is utility is a subjective concept. It is not objective. It cannot be measured objectively and numerically. It, it is a feeling, that satisfaction that gets by an individual consumer. And finally, utility has no ethical or moral significance. It has no moral values in it. For example, a knife, a knife in the kitchen is used for cutting of vegetables. We derive utility cutting of vegetables in the, by, with the help of knife in the kitchen. But at the same time, a knife in the hands of a killer, he does not derive utility out of it. It is used to kill his enemy. So, utility has no ethical or moral significance. And so we can just conclude that. Utility is psychological in nature, not equal to usefulness, and it is not the same as pressure. And utility is personal and relative. Utility is the function of the intensity of human want. Utility is a subjective concept. And finally, utility is, has no ethical or moral significance. So, final. A commodity or a good that has got satisfaction of human wants is known as utility. Types of utility. There are different types of utility. Just think, raw materials in their original form may not possess utility for an individual consumer. Example, cotton. That does not give utility for an individual consumer. But when it becomes as a finished good, finished products, like a dress, it provides utility to him. So that's what we call it as form utility. So first, form utility. Form utility and second, that is according to the time. So time utility. A sick person, when he is uh, in need of blood during the time of operation, it gives great utility for him rather than at the time of blood donation. So that's what we call it as time utility. Same thing, when your blood dress during the time of winter season is that we derive higher utility rather than wearing during this time of what a hot season. So time utility is also very important. Third, place utility. So according to the place, now for example, a reader who likes to read more books if that particular book, what he wants, is just kept in the uh, shop, then it has got no utility for him. When he just buys and can, reads and then gets satisfaction out of it, he has got higher utility. So that's what we call it as place utility. A student, just having his books, that is from the publication center, I mean production center, has, he does not derive utility from it. But when he just takes that books and uses for his education, it gives utility for him. So he derives utility out of it. So that's what we call it as place utility. And fourth, service utility. Service utility and as you can just understand this what is the meaning of service utility a person one who is need of your an advice of a lawyer so that is what we get service from the lawyer or a patient from the doctor 
and he derives utility out of these services. So we call that a service utility. So an individual consumer just derives service utility from the service made available at the time when he is most needed it. So a patient needed a service from a doctor when he needs most. So that's what we call it as service utility. And the fifth point is possession utility. That's very easy. So when a student buy a book or a dictionary from the bookseller and that he did not or he does not derive utility from it. But when he makes use of it, when he reads and then possesses for himself, then only it gives utility for him. Same thing, even if a person buys a thing, a dress material, and keeps it in the cupboard, no use. That is, he does not derive utility out of it. But whenever he wears, he wears with the, that is the satisfaction power of that, what he has got, that becomes his possession utility. And he is proud to have that dress for himself and wear it. The satisfaction that he receives by using of that dress, that he derives utility, which is known as possession utility. And the last one, the sixth one is knowledge utility. So fourth, fifth, so the play that is what we have got the fifth one, possession utility, and sixth, knowledge utility. So possession, possession, and sixth, knowledge. So knowledge that we obtain from an advertisement, it's a gift, gives utility to us. So it is the utility derived by just having knowledge of your particular thing. An advertisement that is uh, actually serves as a, so, a source of information on an, an object. So we can call it as, that is as the knowledge utility. Now let us see the measure or measurability of utility. We can't measure the utility. You know, wants are satisfied by the act of consumption. The consumer derives utility measured in terms of utils. So, we measure the utility in terms of utils. We call it as utils. So, and Arthur Marshall says that the measurement of utility is just uh, indirectly using the measuring rod of money. So with the help of the money, we can just, the value of the money of an individual goods or um, service that we can just measure it. But generally, an utility is a unit of measurement of utility. An individual pays a price for the unit of that good equal to the utility derived. So that we call it as util. So an util, the measurability of measurability. So the measurability of utility can exist. Measurability of utility. The measurability of utility is just to measure, but as we say it as util. So what is util? An util is a unit of measurement of utility. An individual pays a price for that uh, unit of that good equal to the utility he derives. And that's what Alfred Marshall says that it is the measuring rod of money. So we call it as util. Measuring rod of money. Util. Machining rod of money. Rod of money. So now we have understood what is utility, characteristics of utility, different types of utility, and the measurability of utility. Let us continue this lesson in the next class.